Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Marvelous Chats YouTube channel. Today, we're talking about Miss Marvel episode four. If you are new here to the Marvelous Chats, make sure you join uh, the channel by subscribing so you come back every week for all of our nerdy content that we post. And leave a like on the video if you're enjoying Miss Marvel and you want to talk about it a little bit in the comment section with us down below. All right, uh, Finto and Saberwolf. Uh, episode four to Miss Marvel. We got introduced to the Red Daggers. Ooh, what do you guys think about episode four, uh, Finto? Alex, know, you, I, Alex, you go first, please. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I need I need some I need some positivity in the chat first here before. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't want to dunk on so, it straight away. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I understand. So totally um this episode was not as exciting as I wanted it to be. I think it was a very like breakdown episode that kind of like ramped up at the very end, which I feel like that's gonna be the tradition for a lot of MCU episodes nowadays. We don't really see anything at the beginning anymore. We just see something at the end, not even at the middle. It's just nuts. Like it's it, it's too much of a it's too much of a cookie cutter kind of situation. And I, I I'm not a fan of it. Um, I do like seeing all the culture. I like that they were in Karachi and that they were like checking out all the different stuff that that they do at, like within that culture. But it, it, I feel like we've gotten enough of it. Like we you know like we've had episode you know one through three. And they've given us enough culture. I think we've been given enough. Like we're full on it. Let's let's get into the action. Mm. Let's start learning how to fight. Let's start. Let's put on the costume because we're still not at the costume part, and it's yeah. starting to get really upsetting because it's it's one of those moments where like yeah, eventually they're going to come to the costume because like I see that they're they're doing the colors and it's yeah. coming in. Nothing. And it, but like the chase scene, I thought was really fun. You know, with the with the trucks and the car and the little cart. I thought that was cool. Um, the the fact that she's kind of learning a bit more about her hard light abilities and learning about her past uh, as well as like learning that there's two different types of the world like it's different universes mm -hmm. um that that kind of ties in with the fact that we're in a multiverse and and i'm hoping that with everything that's going on we haven't i know we have um ant-man that was discussed we had you know captain marvel and we have all these other characters that were that were discussed but as far as we know we've not had any, any interactions with like what they've done in the world besides the uh the whole thanos snap situation so i'm beginning to wonder is this actually not the 616 universe oh is this God. something else that'd be and and i want to yeah i want to know what you think about that Pinto. um yeah like i think you know I saw an interview with uh, Taika Waititi during the week and he said that someone asked him the question, is this Jane Foster from the multiverse? And he said, there is no, there is zero multiverse stuff in this movie. So I don't know if like the multiverse is going to be expanded out into other projects like what you're saying, or if it's just kind of localized with like Spider-Man and like people who mm -hmm. were in New York at that time. It feels, it feels like it's a kind of closed off event at the moment. So I don't know if, I think it would be a, I know, so I suppose she's in Jersey, so it's like she's right beside that. But technically, I it feels like she's like very distant from New York City, like you know. And I know geographically she's not, but um, I don't know. I just get the feeling like she's in a different world. But I don't know if mm -hmm. I think that would be a bit of a bold thing to do for them to say that she's actually in a different dimension or part of a, a different multiverse or something. I think that would be pretty crazy. Um, for me, this this episode, I I, I gotta say, yeah, it was it was very boring as well. Um. You know, like when she first got, touches down, and um, I just thought I was watching Chung Chi again. Like you know, where they're just like driving through the city, and she's looking at all the stuff. Like I was like, this is like page for page, exactly like Chung Chi. Like it's the exact same thing. Like I felt like I'd seen it before. You know, so I was just like, whatever. Like that, it just didn't interest me at all. Um, I think there was a couple of good scenes. Like a little, like some of the choreography was okay. I feel like the choreography in the show is terrible so far, um, and. I think with um, Kamala Khan herself, like she's so like amateur, like there probably be, like should be a couple of episodes of her training. Whereas I like, you know, this is episode four. We're finished episode four now. We're well past the halfway point of the season. And, you know, she, she can't defend herself right now. Barely, barely defend herself right now. So it's like, I don't see her kind of fighting anybody, of, anybody of any significance or importance or threat. I think maybe she just kind of deals with that, like her family from the Jin family and stuff. Like if, if even, I don't even know if she'll actually deal with it. Because if you think about it, like they're probably going to, these episodes are so short that they're probably going to do like 20 minutes of her making her costume, trying it on, doing stupid stuff in the costume, like, you know, getting back to, because I think in one of the original trailers, 
we see like she's talking with Bruno and she's like, I'm a superhero. She turns around and runs away. She's all cheery and everything. And that's her wearing the newer suit, I think. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, we know she's going back home. There's got to be some stuff going on with Bruno and stuff like that. I just don't feel like we have a lot of time left to explore her character before. And I presume the next thing we're going to see her in is the Marvels. So like in episode six, are we going to have like um, Brie Larson show up or something like that? Like, I think we need like an A-lister to kind of show up for it to kind of make the show worthwhile because at the moment I just feel like I'm watching the bare bones of a of a uh, of an origin story so much so to the fact like you know at least when we have like Spider-Man for example Homecoming it takes place well after he's been bitten he's been Spider-Man for a little while like he's learning his powers you know we're not kind of watching it from day one whereas here it's like it's a very slow burner to kind of get her to a superhero status like you know like she's barely a hero right now let alone superhero you know so i just feel like it's just crawling along like not a lot is happening there was some cool kind of talks about the gin and the other dimension i think we saw some cool um like visuals and stuff like that but other than that like for me not a lot happened in that episode at all like i i'm, I'm having trouble kind of trying to pick out key points to even talk about here to be honest so <laughs> what do you think of <laughs> Uh, I'm just, this episode was just kind of felt really mediocre to me. Um, you know, I miss Marvel as a whole. I really enjoy the story of what's going on. Like, I enjoy the characters. I enjoy the settings. Like, I thought the setting in Pakistan was beautiful. We never really go there in movies and TV shows that much for, like, American audiences. So that was very cool. Um, it's kind of funny that, like, if you ever watch anything where they go to Mexico and they just put, like, a yellow filter over everything. Yeah, and then yeah. when you go to Pakistan, it's just, like, <laughs> color bursts all over the screen to show you that you're in Pakistan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like I just think that the plot of the show they've just they never found it and there's nothing there that is that intriguing for us to like that is gripping us from week to week. Uh the fact that like one week they were just all of a sudden like the djinn are here and this is a djinn. All right, there it is. All right, next week. The red daggers are here and the red dagger like there's no build up to that. There's no mystery mm-hmm. that you're trying to discover. Like the red dagger thing should have been something they introduced loosely like or in episode 2, like the ideas of it like the secret red dagger society type of deal right and then you know you don't know what it is and then you finally get the reveal in this episode like there's just nothing that feels continuous and it just it's, it's, it's kind of boring man and this is in in a sense it's not even bad like it just there's so much more going on in other shows that for some reason is more gripping like the boys is a much more gripping show and keeps you watching uh every minute you know stranger things is wrapping up its series and season uh and every minute of that like you're glued to the television and this show is just missing something to make it that compelling um and i think that's been a problem but i think that so far the cast has been carrying the show not the plot and this is an episode where we didn't have the full cast in there we don't have our friends in there uh we don't have the rest of our family and i think those two elements have been really what have made the show a lot better for me uh, and so now that we're missing those in this episode, it falls even flatter. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I, I, I don't, I'm not enjoying it all that much right now. Hopefully it comes back to the first episode where I loved it, mm. uh, but I, I just want them to do more. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what that means, but I, I just want it to mean more. The, they rewrote her whole backstory and how she got her powers. And it is just not as good. Like it's just, it's just mm-hmm. mediocre. Like the comic books uh, did it way better than these writers that are doing the TV show. Isn't it, yeah, cra- isn't it crazy it's... how the first episode was so strong and it's just been a steady decline since? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's so short it's weird. as well. Like, it's like, how do they do this? Like, yeah, and I, I think the the idea behind the dialogue is is that it's going flat. Like, because we when we watch the boys, yes, there's a lot of carnage. Yes, there's like these fight scenes and these like gruesome moments of whatnot. But then you have like this dialogue, and there's a ton of dialogue in the boys because there's a lot of things that they need to talk about. But it's so intriguing it's so interesting it's yep. it, it just glues our eyes to the screen and i think the conversations that they have in in miss marvel they were good at the beginning but i think they're getting a little too comfortable or casual mm-hmm. and so therefore we don't really care too much about what's going on yes the red dagger showed up and yes we want to know more about like you know the the hard light and and what you know what she can do with it and and this alternate uh universe with the with the whole train situation you know, that's going to be cool. I think that's going to that's going to pick up, you know, maybe episode five will get better because now we're going to be in a different world. We won't have all this other stuff like clouding up uh, Kamala's, you know, vision of what she needs to do. And 
so I'm hoping that it gets a little bit better. But in terms of the dialogue, yeah, it's just it felt so flat. Mm-hmm. Like I I don't remember anything that they really talked about. I remember the stuff that they talked about in the previous episodes because those were actually interesting. It mattered. Mm-hmm. You know, the the whole situation where they were um where I forgot that that girl's name. She's she's running for that position um oh, yeah. so that she could, you know, Her she friend. can help the community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's that's important when she was like going through the school and and they're like, hey, you got to think about your future and whatnot. Like, I still remember that. Like, those are important things that we should remember because she's still a kid and that, you know, and although she's going to become a a superhero, just like Peter Parker, she's still a kid. So, like, it still has to have this whole growth situation And at this point. Now we're kind of like veering off into more of the culture and less of Kamala. And I don't like that. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, you know, the whole storyline with the grandmother and the mother, I thought that in a, in a bubble, that's like a very interesting conversation they had about their culture yeah, and why the mom had to feel like she had to leave and stuff. And this mm-hmm. whole story is the idea of like, you know, it's a repeating cycle of like a woman from the Pakistani cu- culture, like having to leave to go find herself. Like they, they repeated that in every generation. But I feel like that type of story only really is compelling, you know, in season two or three, once we've been with the mother longer. Mm-hmm. That's why in the boys, everything is so comp- like you're so intriguing to listen to two people talk. It's because they've had these seasons, long seasons leading up to these that we're finally getting to those moments where we want to sit and listen to these characters and wh- why they tick, why everything's going on beneath them. And mm-hmm. it, they just haven't earned that Miss Marvel. And I think they need to just start like packing these shows with like bigger casts about other people we want to watch too. Mm-hmm. Um, just having like one main character that we're following kind of doesn't work. Like if you kind of take the Stranger Things model, there's like three groups that we're following that yeah. all have interesting things going on that kind of weave together. It's kind of like how Game of Thrones works, right? Yeah. Like Marvel needs to go a little bit bigger with the shows uh, rather than just like one main person. I think. I think they yeah. plan to start doing that as they go forward. I think and I pray that they're kind of learning from the mistakes as we go. Like, you know, from what I've heard, the echo show is going to have daredevil. It might have bullseye. It could have kingpin, you know, there's going to be lots going on in that show. And then we've got obviously with like she Hulk, you've got banner in there, potentially Matt Murdock again. And like, you know, it feels like they're kind of doing team ups nearly going forward. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like this might be the kind of last show that is going to be like a, an origin story for a long time by the looks of it like i know well echo i suppose might have flashbacks and stuff like that but it's a character that we've been introduced to before so i feel Mm -hmm. like this is just it's a very slow paced origin story and it's just not very interesting so i i i I pray it gets better i really do like i thought it's a bit of a missed opportunity because like this is a character who we know is going into Captain Marvel 2 and is going to be, like, one of the main characters of that. Like, she will be one of the Marvels, like, you know. So it's like, yeah. I don't know why they just didn't give her a bit more of an action-packed introduction into the universe. Like they did in that game, you know, in the, the Avengers game. She goes to, like, Avenger Con or whatever, like she did in this show. Uh, but she ends up bumping into, like, Steve Rogers. I know they can't do that now, but, like, she could bump into Sam Wilson. Like, you know, there's no, like, yeah. Sam's, there's no reason Sam shouldn't be popping up in this show. Like, you know, and it, then maybe she meets Captain Marvel at the start of the show. Like, imagine how much more interested you'd be if Brie Larson showed up at the very beginning. I think it would just spark a lot of interest and make you want to sit and watch the rest of the show because you're thinking, like, wow, she's in episode one who's going to be in episode five and six, you know, cause it mm-hmm. seems like the Disney, the Disney Marvel stuff seems to be like episode five and six seems to be where the action's at. Like, you know, if you go back to like Hawkeye season five was when they introduced Kingpin and six, they had like King, Kingpin actually in the episode, they kind of teased him in episode five, but like, yeah, it's, it seems like that's what they're doing, you know? So yeah. I, it just, I feel like nothing's happened in the show. Like if I go back to last week, you know, they spent like 20 minutes of the 35 minute episode in at that wedding. And it was just really boring. Like, you know, I'm like, we're I, I had in my head when I'm watching this, like we were halfway through the episode. And I'm like, there's the halfway point of the entire series. And we're sitting in a wedding watching them dancing around the place. I'm like, what's going on? I think, I, you know, it's not interesting. Mm-hmm. It's, it's 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 much like it's much like with with like what you said earlier, uh, Loki, when we saw the first season of Loki episode five and six exactly you know episode yeah. five showed us like all this craziness going on we yeah. saw all the Lokis. you know uh, throg we saw all the lokis we saw all the... so if if it's following that same kind of like Pattern. you know 
pattern, mm. then we're going to see it again in episode five and then episode six might drop off. I would say the only exception to that would be Moon Knight because Moon Knight always had some sort of kicker near the end of each episode. And that's what really kept me going for Moon Knight. And I really loved all of the all of the dialogue between him and his inner selves. And I think that's what worked the most. Like Kamala doesn't have anybody just to talk to like on the side, just like Hoffman said, like in this current episode. And that's why it's not so, you know, uh, organic. It, it feels like it's forced. It feels like it, we're, we're just being forced to like introduce all these things so quickly, like Hoffman said earlier too. Like it's all coming back to this point of like, you know, you're, 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 moving us too fast like why are you doing six episodes why don't you do eight or ten you know give us something more yeah. if you want to grow these characters and and have us even give a shit about them like you got to give us more time you know yeah. black noir wasn't a known character like we know we knew that he was there we knew that he was like he could be any kind of person we didn't know that he was like a killer or any at any point but once we saw this current episode of The Boys, when we saw Black Noir, we got to see the real him. But we knew him before, and that's why we gave a shit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just mediocre. I hope it, the show like kind of rebounds and gets back to where it kind of started. Um, I even thought the cinematography in this episode is just a step down to what they're doing. But um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Let us know what you guys thought in the comment down below. How do you guys think Miss Marvel season is doing? Uh, that's going to do it for us on this episode or this video for the, from the Marvelous Chats. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Later. Bye. Bye, everyone.